Amen. 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 Let everybody say amen. The healing power is standing before you right now. Okay? My wife is still having residuals from COVID-19. But I'm standing before you. We are healed. We claim the victory. Amen. The devil thought he had us. Ah. But we made him alive through Yahshua. In Yahweh. See, I'm so used to wearing this mask now. But I'm going to take it off. God is a great God. I listen to all the songs. Yes, he knows my name. Yes, he said bow down. We bow down every day. Amen. If you think this disease is a joke, you better step back and take, take another look at it. You think the flu is something. You need to step back. Bronchitis, you need to step back. This ain't no joke. They're lingering effects. Even though people have tested negative, they're still lingering effects. But we serve a mighty God. Amen. I welcome you today to another part of pulpits of hope. What did I say, pulpits of hope? The five keys of successful evangelism. Number one, we did, we talked about revival. Number two, we still in. That's the training and equipping. Churches grow when every member is trained and prepared to serve. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. How appropriate today that as I prepare, let me change that, as we prepare to go into the most holy days. Amen? That I'm a pseudo farmer. Y'all know what a pseudo farmer is. That means I just plant a little garden outside in my yard. Right now, I want to turn over the soil in our hearts today. That as we prepare, when I come back before you on the 27th, to give you the thrust of it. But I want you to be prepared so that you don't go into this season not understanding the reason for the season. Come on, you understand that? I don't hear no amens. You see, but let me set the stage for you. First of all, I want to introduce you to foot, or in the scriptures it says feet washing. Amen. How many of y'all know that your head, your hands, your legs, your feet all have Spiritual significance. Huh? Let me share this with you. Feet in Hebrew is the word regal. Right? Y'all need to have a pen and pencil so you can write this down. You can look it up in Strong's 7272. You see, feet washing is one of the wisdom of your God that some believers use to overcome Hasitan, the devil. You see it as a dominion exercise. What kind of exercise? Dominion. Dominion. You see, feet washing is a mystery, which simply means the hidden truth of God. What kind of hidden truth? Of God. Only those, get this now, only those who understand the mysteries benefit from them. Every part of my body and your body is, has a spiritual significance. You see, the head is what? Huh? It's the symbol of our destiny. The head represents what? 
Come on, I don't hear y'all. Of our destiny. The hands are a symbol of our productivity. Come on now. You don't use your hands. You're unproductive. All right? Okay, now. Our feet. Oh, let me get, when we look at our feet. They're unattractive. They stink. <laughs> they dirty. We got bunions, corns, and everything else on them. Right? But our feet are the keys to our establishment in life. Our feet, mine as well as yours, amen, establish our dominion. Have you got that yet? Wherever I walk is my dominion. This is my domain right here. This is my domain right here, because I'm right up here. When I'm in my house, that's my domain. When I'm on my job, Wherever the boss tell me, you're over here, you're over here, that's my dominion. In the spiritual world, he gave us dominion. You see, when Adam, come on, lost dominion, what did he tell? What did God instruct the servant to do? Come on, y'all. What did God instruct he didn't, the serpent just didn't do it. Y'all told the devil to do what? He said to bruise his heel. Talking about Adam. Look at Genesis 3.15. You see? You see, a polluted foot cannot succeed in life. Come on. Our feet is also our instrument of protection and protection in direction. Our legs are the symbols of our experience and possessions. Once your feet or my feet are blessed and beautiful, we can win every battle in life and possess all of our possessions in life. That's the key. Your feet, these things right here, give us the ability to move when we go into the devil territory, <laughs> he know he got to move. Even though he said to bruise our heel. But if we go in with power and it's clean, it's there. But I wanted to take you to, to understanding that. And it's very important that you get this. Because we cannot be successful as believers if we don't understand this teaching. I, wanted, I want you to go to Luke 22, before I pray. I want you to go to Luke 22, verse 24 and 30. And then I'm going to have Donnie read it from another translation. But I would like for everybody to read this. Because I want you to get the picture here. Because a lot of times we don't understand the things that we do and why we do them. Amen? So can you read this with me? And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called bene what? Are called what? Benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be the younger and he that is chief, as he that doth what? Serve. Donnie, would you read it out of the complete Jewish Bible? And an argument arose among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Mm -hmm. But Yeshua said to them, the kings of the nations lord it over them, and those in authority over them are given the title benefactor. But not so with you. On the contrary, let the greater among you become like the younger and one who rules like one who serves. Mm, mm, mm. You see, when we look at Luke 22, a lot of people don't understand the scripture. Because it's talking about in 24th you see, let me put it this way, everybody wants to be a leader. Nobody wants to be a follower, 
But to be a follower, but to be a leader, you've got to first become a follower. Yes, sir. <laughs> you understand? You can't lead if you're not a follower. Yes. But people want to bypass the follower and jump right into leading. That's why everything falls apart. Because you have not been trained or equipped to lead. Yes. Come on now. Amen. Come on, now get some amens. Amen. This is not an easy message. As we go into these feast days, we got to understand because we missed it. We missed it. We bypassed it. We skirted over it. But to be a good student of the scriptures, we got to go in depth. Yes. We got to dig deeper. We just can't hit gold and say, I found gold. I got to get deeper and deeper to get the mother man. That's, right. That's it. That's it. You see, Luke 22 is a lesson in leadership. Yes. That's the bottom line. That's it. it is a study on biblical leadership. That's what it is. You see, it's the last of five articles that's based on Luke 22, verses 1 to 30. Yahshua was constantly teaching the disciples. He was constantly deceiving. He was teaching them. Every move they made, every step they took, he was teaching them. Yes. Amen? Yes. What's a disciple, Pastor? A disciple is the student of a master teacher. Is a student of a master teacher. You see, and the reason that he was teaching them is obvious. Because they needed it. And so do you and I. So do you and I. We need to be training and equipping every day because what I thought about yesterday ain't there no more. It's called progressive revelation. Amen. If you're not progressing, you're standing still. Yes. Come on, to our teachers. Yes, sir. I'm not speaking those on, on, on YouTube. I welcome you. But I'm talking to Emmanuel worship sin members. Amen. I mean, this for us. We share this with the community. Let me pray here. Father God, as you have given me this message for the last three weeks, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to bring it. I thought if I might not bring it, I forgot the day and the time to Mama Maria said, we're going to do this on the 27th. But the Holy Spirit gave it to her and gave it to me. Said, plow up the soil now. Turn it over. I said I was a pseudo farmer. Before you can plant, you got to turn up the soil. You got to turn it over. Right now it's wet. I ask you, Lord, that this soil is wet to help me turn it over. So that as we go into these feast days, this feast day of Pesach, that Father God let it start growing and fermenting and start growing the flower that we may be found worthy to be called your sons and daughters. If you agree, say amen. amen. That's what's turning it over. But you see, Jesus, Yahshua, he knew it. I said the Hebrew word, for feet was regal, strong 72, 72. I now want to take you to our main scripture. This, this is awesome. Because Jesus flipped the script. He flipped the scripts on the disciple. Just like he does this. Who's the greatest? I'm the greatest. The sons of thunder, John's and James. Who's the greatest? And I'm this and I'm that. I'm this ministry. I'm this pastor. I'm this elder. That's not what he's talking about. Huh? We just read it. He said, let him be the younger, and he that is chief do what? As he that doth serve. For us to understand foot washing, according to John chapter 13, verses 2 to 16, we had to go back to Luke. 
It's also in Mark. It's also in Matthew. But Luke put the spin on it. Because Yahshua flipped the script. Every time we read in the scriptures where somebody did this, Yahshua whoop, flipped the script. Peter, I, I'm not going to deny you three times before the cock crow. What? That's <laughs> that fits into that realm of who's the greatest. Every time we look in the scriptures, who got the big mouth? Peter. <laughs> Peter. He flipped the script. Who do they say that I am? What did Peter say? You are? Thou art the Christ. That's a, that's a Thou art the Christ. The who son told of the you God that? that lived. Who told you that? Flesh and blood didn't tell you. Flesh and blood didn't tell him. Everywhere we see, but Yahshua flipped the script. He flips the script on you, and he flips the script on me, because we think we know it all. In order to be a good leader, you first got to become a good follower. That's right. In order to play football, you got to be, you got to learn the basics. You got to learn how to block. You got to learn how to move from right to left. To be a good boxer, you got to learn when to jab, duck, move. You got to learn that before you jump in the ring. <laughs> I used to do that. To be in ministry, to be in ministry, come on now. You got to be able to take the good with the bad. You got to be able to take Criticism. Yeah. You got to be able to be hated. Yeah. Because didn't he say, just as they was against him? They're going to be against you. <laughs> That's the key. But he flipped. What did he do? Say it with me. Flip say it with me. Flip the script. He flipped the script. Yeah. He turned it round. See, because some of us got it wrong. Salvation is not about a straight up. Salvation is about down. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Huh? The script. Salvation is not about a up. Salvation is about the down. About down, then up. Not straight up. You got to go down first. Then he rolls it up. And then you come up. That's what he did. That's what he did. That's what he did. He died first. He died first. John 13. Chapter. John 13. Verses 10 to 16. I'm not going to do 17 right yet. But I want, to, I want you to get this picture. Because salvation it's not up, it's a down. In order to serve, you got to first go down. Sometimes we pick where we want to go. I'm not going in the hood. I'm not going to that homeless person. I'm not going to talk to that prostitute. I'm not doing that. I will go over here. Oh, let me, let me throw this here. Let me, let me change the picture. Let me, let me put it so that you can understand this. I work at Chesterfield Town Center in Shore Pump Mall. There's a difference. Because mm -hmm. in Shore, in Chesterfield, I'm dealing with this. What's up, blood? You got this dog? I'm dealing with this in the car because I do patrol. They said, now in the, in the parking lot, drink shorty with 40. <laughs> you understand? They may cuss out a customer. They may cuss out in Short Punt, Short Punt Town Center. Totally different. Totally. Because it's on that side of the river. <laughs> it's on that side of the river. It's the only outside mall in Virginia. God tells us to go where he wants us to go. If you want to know if you're serving him, 
Let him tell you. Let him ask and say, Father, where do you want me to go? He's going to take you out your comfort zone, yeah. and he's going to put you over here. That's right. Yep. Come on. Yep. Yep. When the AIDS epidemic was on, and I went to a conference with, and I used to work with Bob and Gilead. They had up on the stage, Donnie, four people. And it was four women. And they said, pick one. Pick which one is a man who has HIV. And this was all pastors from all over the country. Everybody picked that one. One, two, three. Everybody picked number three. I'm put it like this, good looking girl. When they said stand up, the person that has HIV and is not a female. Everybody picked three. Number one stood up. Everybody was like, we cannot judge a book by its cover. This diseases and all this is not a respect of persons. It's not Republican, Democrat, Catholic, Muslim, Messianic, Baptist, non-denominational, it's not. But this is the point that I want you to keep in mind. Because when we look at John 13, where Yeshua flipped the script, that the disciples did not understand. Come on, somebody, because they were just like us. They were stuck in their prejudice of who they were serving. Read the life of Peter. Read the life of Paul. Paul and Peter had, had, had an argument because Paul had to tell Peter, when you with the Gentiles, you're okay, but as soon as your Jewish brothers walk in, you want to, you want to slide over here to them. God, God wants us to be with everybody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But he said, Yahshua said to him, he that, he that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. I want you to hold that. Read it, Donnie. Yeshua said to him, a man who has had a bath doesn't need to wash except his feet. His body is already clean. You see, did y'all catch that yet? Y'all didn't catch that. He said, but not all. Everybody in here. <laughs> Look around here. Everybody in here. He said, but not all. All of us in here ain't saved. <laughs> Come on now. All of us in here, is, is, is the kids say, you're faking the funk. That means, that means you ain't telling the truth. But he said, but not all. So who is he talking about? Don't say yeah. So what is foot washing? Anybody? I told you the pulpit of hope is about talking back. This is a teaching session. You need to talk back. Do you know what feet washing are? Do you know what this is about? Serving. Yeah. And humility. Yes. Right? Yeah. The Adventists called it the ordinance of humiliation. Okay? But let me take you a little deeper. It's more than that. It's more than that. Yahshua was teaching them a lesson. He was teaching them a lesson about feet washing. See, because in the day, in the day, they walked on the highways. They had dog dew. They had cows. They had all this nasty stuff on them dirt roads. So they had to wash their feet, right? But this is how they washed their feet. They had a slave come in and wash their feet. Let me get this, you Torah teachers. Mm -hmm. Do you know that a Jewish slave could not wash the feet? Could not wash the feet? It didn't matter who his master was. 
If he was a Jew, he could not wash the feet. They had to have Gentile slaves That's right. wash the feet. Yes. But Yahshua flipped the script. That's right. Because in that upper room discourse, there was no slaves. Y'all get this? Yes. Uh, let me share this with you. FYI. Some of these scriptures tell us it was just the 12. No, it wasn't. Get this now. There were 120 followers in the upper room. It was just not the 12, but we look at Mark, we look at Matthew, we even look at Luke. They will tell us, imply to us, it was just the 12. But it was more than the 12. We need to understand this. There are more than 12 of us in here. Amen. But he said, but not all. Who was he talking to? Who was he talking to? I can't hear you. Who was he talking to? But not all. He was talking about Judas. It's scary. Because as they sat at the table, and he had told them before that, that somebody was going to betray him, and everybody said, is it I? Is it I? I was in the play a few years back that one of my brothers had wrote up. It was called, Is It I? And it was based on the Last Supper. And everybody was asking, is it I? It is I. But he said, the person who will do I. <laughs> Say it, Daddy. With dip. dip. Because everybody didn't dip. Stop. Everybody didn't dip. Just like when we go, we look at people eating gravy. Some people just take the gravy and the, and the mashed potatoes. I dip my bread in the gravy and the mashed potatoes. You see? So that's just a little side note. But to understand this, this is why we have to dig up the soil. Because there's certain things that everybody thought, I knew, I know, I know about the Last Supper. No, you don't. Till you start studying and start, I'm talking about deep study. Let's not just look at it from, I, I'm trying to, I can't be nice, the Holy Spirit said you got to be true. Let's not just look at it from the Adventist aspect. Let's not look at it from the Lutheran, the Episcopalian, the Methodist, the Catholic, we got to look at it from what thus saith the Lord. Because you want to know why? See, nobody asked me that question. Why don't more believers do foot washing? They don't know what Come it on. means. They don't know what it means. You say? They don't know what it means. They don't know what it means, but, why? but there's something else. There's something else. When, 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 when is Pesach? When is Easter? Oh, yeah, Sunday. Huh? They switched it. What? They switched it. But what happens on Thursday before Easter? Come on, somebody. That's why I keep telling you, you got to know that you know what you say you know. Because if you come to me, and I used to tell, this is how I was trained. I had to know so that when I'm talking to somebody in the community, well, you do Easter and you do Pesach, what's the difference? I got to be able to explain it to them. Well, you know, uh, well, I go to church on Thursday before Easter, and I get blessed by the priest. I do Ash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's called Monday. M-U-N-D-A-Y. Every Thursday before Easter, you will see all the Catholics, you will see some Episcopalians, you will see some Lutherans, they will all go to church and get blessed. Mm -hmm. And get blessed. That's right. And those of us who don't understand will be right there with them. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking what I know. Because in a ministry that I'm a part of, I watched the messianic go right into the midst, and I had to pull their coat. Wait a minute. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. We can fellowship with them, but we don't do what they do. Right. Oh, okay. Go study. 
That's why Paul told Timothy to do what? To do what? Study. To study the word. Huh? Yeah. To show yourself approved. approved. All scripture is given for what? Correction. Inspiration. Correction. Come on. Yeah. That's what it's for. That's why the word of God is there for us to look at. See, we can't do ministry. We can't do the feast days if we don't understand that. Because when somebody says, well, you do the feast days, why do you do the feast days? I got to be able to sit down and tell them. Tell them what? Well, what is the Moedim? That's God's appointed time. God got his own calendar. He ain't got the Gregorian. We got to study where the Gregorian calendar frame came from. So why don't we do foot washing? Because most churches flew over there. I've been doing foot washing for over 50 years. I washed my wife's feet. I washed my brother's feet. I told y'all about a brother. Love him dearly. I ain't never done nothing to this brother. Brother didn't like me. But we had communion. That's when we, every quarter, that's when we do communion and foot washing. And it's open. That means you, as a believer, here at Emmanuel Worship Center, could come to the Adventist church while we're doing communion, and you could do communion and foot wash. But as I watch this brother's feet, dig this. I got to get down. You might have to help me up. And as I'm washing his feet, I'm asking God to bless me, to bless him. I'm asking him that if there's anything between me and him, let it be done there because there's significance behind foot washing. Mm -hmm. We look at it, well, it's humility and serving. It goes deeper than that. I told you, Yahshua flipped the script. He flipped the script. And if you don't study, you won't catch it. What did I say earlier? Only those who understand the ministry, the mystery, reap the benefit. Right. Only those who understand the mystery will reap the benefit because it's about a cleansing. He said, if I don't wash you, what did Peter say? No, you're not washing me. He said, well, <laughs> then you have no part. What did he say? You're not washing me. He said, if I don't wash you, you can't be a part of me in the kingdom because what was they arguing about who would be the greatest in the kingdom come on he he was demonstrating what he was teaching that's right it comes through demonstration you want to know what a man or woman about watch him. you know what's so significant about children I got some children right there. You know what's so significant about children? Because he told them what? He said, in order for y'all to come to the kingdom, you got to be like them. Got to be like a child. They ain't prejudiced. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know me, but they know me. But they're not judgmental. Mm -hmm. They watch what you do. They watch, listen to what you say. Then they go to their dad and say, no, Ella Branford is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ella Branford, I like to have fun with him. But you know, and you want to see how a child does, watch who they go to. Watch who a child migrates to. You, you really want to know? See the people that they will run up to and hug and laugh and play with out of the adults. Then you know they've been watching him, you, you, whoever. God is telling us. That's why the understanding of foot washing is there. So in John 3, 13, 10, Jesus said to him, he that wash needeth not save to wash his feet. We oftentimes believe because we got baptized. 
I went down in the water. I'm clean. No, you're not. No, you're not. What did I say about feet? What did I say about legs? Because some of us go to places that we shouldn't be going. Come on now. Some of us do things with our feet and legs that we shouldn't be doing. Like, for instance, kicking that dog. Huh? That's still God's creature. Some of us be walking past and we do like this. Keep going. We got to look at what the symbol is of these. It's direction and possessions. That's the key. See, this message, all, all the messages that we have, we got to turn it up and make it real. Because we keep doing the cycle every year. Every year. We do the fast. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right. We do the fast. We go through the teaching of, 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 of Pesach. Mama Maria gives everybody scripture. We get everybody up here. They start reading and teaching. But we miss the point of foot washing. We missed the point. You see, because the word is lameness. Do you understand lameness? Lameness is when, when the animal, he get his leg and he got a gimp. People, I got a bad knee, so sometimes I limp until I get Arthur out the way. But lameness, spiritually, is ineffectiveness. Mm -hmm. What the word I said? Part of the pulpit's hope is about church growth. If there's no leadership, no direction, no focus, no accountability, then the church has lameness. Luke 22 and 24 is the talking about leadership. You can do ministry all day long, but if you're not reaching them, out there is for naught. Yes. He's telling us that as we go into this new season, he's given us a new direction. Yes. Amen. New direction. We got to walk in it. We can't just talk about it. We got to walk in it. We got to pray in it. We got to ask the Father to guide and direct us. See, the effects of lameness, if y'all should have pencil, listen to this, it's confinement. In the spiritual arena, the spirit of lameness will hinder you from moving from glory to glory and to flow in the things of Yah God. Immobilization or stationary in one area. It brings stagnation in your spiritual and physical life. There is no a little movement. Yes. Lame. Lame. Okay. Lame. The body becomes weight burden. The things that the Lord has given you to do become burdens. Whereas the Bible says that the burden of the Lord is what? Easy. And light. And light. If you are called into ministry, the calling becomes heavy and burdensome. If he ain't called you, that's what it becomes. That's what it becomes. I told you this is not an easy message. Yeah. It is disfiguring. There is no beauty in your life. And the glory of God, which is beautifying, is absent from your life. The glory of Yah beautifies. Yes. Amen. That's what foot washing. But when you're lame, that lameness, and it's ineffectiveness, look around you. Look around you. Just take a good look. Let's be honest with ourselves. Because as we go into this Moedim, as we go into Pesach, in order for me to understand what John 13 is, I have to understand he flipped the script. Because he took on the person of a servant. That's what he did. And he knew that he was going to die in the next 24 hours. And they still didn't catch it. And some of us ain't catching it. We're just taking it day by day, 
Little by little. When my time comes, it comes. That's dead. Might not get it. That's stinking thinking. We got to realize that he's preparing us. These Moedim, these his appointment times are cleansing. When we get baptized, that's cleansing. But foot washing is continual cleaning. Because when I come and I sit before the pastor, I say, Pastor, let me wash your feet. When I sit before my wife and I wash her feet, I'm telling her I love her. No matter what, there's nothing she can do that's going to stop me loving her. Paul said, neither height nor death huh, shall separate me huh, from the love of God. That's the key. So when I wash Aaron's feet, I'm telling Aaron, in spite of, I don't care if you dislike me, I don't care if you talk about me. But Father, bless him. Cover him with the anointing blood of Yeshua. Yeah. Protect him wherever he walks. Yeah. Yeah. That it's about you, yeah. not about me, yeah. not about him. Yeah. That's what foot washing does. And when you don't do foot washing, it's for none. You can do everything else. But Yeshua, you, over, you missed this. You missed it. Because he took on the servant. There was no slave there. Nope. And he was a Jew. He was the I just told you before, it was a law, no Jew could wash the feet. But Yahshua changed it, flipped the script. And he took off his garment and wrapped it around and he washed the feet. And Peter said, you can't wash me. But he said, if I don't wash you, no part of me in the kingdom. In Luke 9, it says, if you have put your hand to the plow and you turn back, you're not fit for the kingdom. See, it's about the kingdom. Now, let's put this together. Kingdom, dominion, equals power. You want power as a church? You want power as an individual? Then you got to do what he did. Because he gave me example. Yes. Let me see verse 17. Let's go, to, let's go to verse 11. John 13, verse 11 to 17. And I'm going to close with this. We have to understand, we do all that talking. I love you, Lord. I surrender my all to you. Have you asked yourself the question? Have you really surrendered all? I'm, I'm telling the truth. I had to experience that. Everything I'm telling you, I'm not telling you just to be telling you off. That's right. When I got shot, when I was out there doing drugs in OD, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you, and I said it 50, 516 times, if you let me get out of this, I won't do it again. Soon as I got free, I was right back there stuffing, because I was a stuffer. I wasn't a home, wasn't a street person. I was what they called the functioning addict. I worked and still got high. Mm -hmm. But I said, if you, if you, if you help me, show me the way. And he did. But he told me this. He said, you got to do it. I, I, I'll help you. How many of y'all know that, that uh, poem, Footprints? Huh? Y'all, y'all, you need to really, that was my poem. That's still my poem. Because I turned around and looked and I said, all this time, where was you at, Jesus? He said, I was carrying you the whole time. When you should have died, I was right there for you. We have to understand that as we go into these feast days, he's looking for a clean heart. That's because I went, I went down in the water. I got baptized seven times. Like name it. I went down in the water seven times. 
And one of my pastors said, why do you keep baptizing this man? He only need to be baptized one time. But when we did the foot washing, he talked to me. And he said, the clean heart. When he washed my feet, I stopped going where I used to go. I stopped hanging with the people I used to hang with. When I used to go down to the corner, they was all on the corner, and the bar, the, I'm going to show you something. Our church was right here. I take you to Pottstown, Pennsylvania, I'll show you. Our church is right here. The Elks Club is right here. The corner bar is right here. So, and I lived up the street. So I had to walk past the Elks Club to get to the church. I had to go, if I went down to the corner, I had to go down to the corner bar. My homies that was dealing drugs lived right across the street from the church. <laughs> but I said, change my direction. Feet, 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 feet. He has to change your direction. When I understood the significance of feet, the ineffectiveness, the ineffectiveness that I had to change. He's telling us for these feast days, we can do the Danny Fast, I don't mean no harm. We can do the Danny Fast, we can do all that. But if our hearts are not genuine, it's for naught. It's for naught. It's for naught. But did I tell you about the kids? All the kids got to do is look at you. See who they gravitate to. God is telling us for a time such as this, with the COVID D and all that there out there, we need to understand this. And it's about that lameness. You cannot wear shoes to adorn your feet. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. Amen. How good. Amen. Scripture says that the messengers of God said that their feet brought the good news. That means they was walking to tell people about the gospel of God. Look it up. Text it. That's what it meant. If you're not doing anything in the community as a ministry, your ministry is for naught. I'm the first to tell you, and I'll show you the scripture. The messenger that brings the good news with his feet means he's walking toward it. Proverbs. We got to understand this. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I want us to look at Proverbs. You want to read that? Yeah, look at Proverbs chapter Look at chapter 4, verse 26 to 28. This is about feet. This is about feet, y'all. What did I say? It's about feet. You understand foot washing? Because everybody's not going to wash everybody's feet. But on the 27th, we're going to prepare for those who want to wash feet to be able to wash feet. Ponder the path of thy feet. What do the word say? That feet, that Hebrew word is regal. And let all thy ways be, what? Be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. The feet, and I'll tell you, is direction. You can talk about me, but look at your feet. Where you walking? Go ahead, read it, Donnie. Level the path of your feet. Let all your ways be properly prepared. Then deviate neither right nor left and keep your foot far from evil. Keep your foot far from evil. What comes out of here, see, a lot of people don't understand this. I didn't get into everything, but look and see what your mouth represents. Mm -hmm. Look what the symbol, what your mouth represents. I told you about the head. The head is what? Destiny? The hands are what? Productivity. The feet is about direction. Huh? Legs help you get there. You lose your legs, can't do nothing. I got somebody sitting in a wheelchair because they got the legs blown off when we was in Vietnam. Huh? You lose a hand or you lose both arms, you don't have no productivity. 
you get hit in the head. Huh? But God tells us that when we look at the significance, see, because foot washing, and see, a lot of these churches don't do foot washing. And they go to the same thing I said, well, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church. When you understand the Catholic Church, and you, as a Torah scholar, you read what Constantine did. He did the counterfeit and flipped the script like Yahshua. But he had to use the Jews in the Bar Kokhba revolt. There were no Jews in Jerusalem for 100 years at the Titus. So when we look at the history, that's why we got to know that we know that we know what we're talking about. See, because when you talk to people, and I talk to people every day, every day, how you doing? Have a nice day. Thank you for coming. I got a brother right now. Every time Maria give me something in the Hebrew, I give it to him. He is so deep into it. He's like, I didn't understand this. Now I do. And he's studying to be a pastor. He's studying to be a pastor. He know Greek. He know a little bit of Hebrew. But he didn't understand the paleo Hebrew. So now that he's studying, that's what God tells us. So that when we go out here to the community, we have to tell the people. Aaron used being in business is the word marketing. We don't market. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't market. We just sit back and send people. I hope they come. They help. They come. You don't believe me? Look on YouTube. See how many viewers you get. See how many people you got coming. Because you're not marketing. Jesus, Yeshua, marketed. Yeah. He marketed. Yeah. Because everywhere he went, he was telling the Pharisees, told the disciples, go listen to them, but don't do what they do. Huh? He was telling them to go into the church, go into the synagogue, listen to them, but don't do what they do. The priest, Leviticus, look at it. Every time they served, they had to wash their hand and they had to wash their feet. Foot washing. It's biblical. We can do the whole feast days. But if you don't do foot washing, when you don't become, because he told them, he told them, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left, and remove thy foot from evil. Go to John 13, verse 16 and 17. And I'm going to close with that. When I look at this time, and I look what he did for me, because this is a false narrative. They put, when you see that they put the nails in the palm of his hands, that's a lie. That lie. They put him in the nerve here. And when they put it in the wrist, there's a nerve there. That when he was on the cross, the whole time, this is what he was doing. That nerve can close your body. He was bumping every time. Every time. He was in total agony. So if he was in agony for me and for you, that he took upon himself those straps for me, how much more should I be doing for him? Amen. But I came to that realization, I don't care who, I love my wife, but I told her I love him more. Huh? That's right. She'll tell you that point blank. She'll tell you that about me. She loved me, but she loved him more. Because just like he gave her to me, he can give it to somebody else. <laughs> me likewise. As long as they following in his path. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you. You know what? In closing, I want everybody to stand up. In closing, I want everybody on your feet. This is for Emmanuel Worship Center. Thank you for YouTube that watching, that are watching us. But this is for us because as we prepare our hearts for the upcoming Modim for Pesach, 
we want to take a new direction as the pastor and Maria. We're talking about going into this season knowing the true reason for this season. Yahshua said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, read it with me, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that sent is greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Read it out of complete Jewish Bible. Yes, indeed, I tell you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is an emissary greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. He's telling us, see, that's what we miss. He's telling us, do them. He flipped the script. Because they was arguing about who's the greatest. They wasn't going to wash each other's feet. <laughs> Come on now. There was no slave in the room. That's right. That's right. So a Jew, could, a Jew slave could not wash the feet. There had to be a Gentile. There were no Jews, no slaves in the upper room. But Yahshua, who came to serve, became the servant. And he took it upon himself to wash their feet. And he tells us, like he tell Peter, I don't, I, some of us got a lot of Peter in us. I ain't doing that. I don't want to wash nobody's feet. Nah, them stinky feet look at Branford's feet. All them bunions and corns, I don't want to wash them feet. But what did he tell Peter? If I don't wash you, you have no part, no part in the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's not about Petersburg, Richmond, Philadelphia. It's not about me. It's about the kingdom. So that when we're talking to people and we're telling people about the kingdom, it's about who the greatest, who speaks the best, who does this. That's not what it's about. He used 12 uneducated, stiff-necked, rebellious men that shook the world. You know, Judas is, I'm going to close with this. You know, when you read, Judas Iscariot's father, that when he betrayed Jesus, was ashamed of him because of his betrayal. How many of us are raising children that don't know these things and they're out there in the world? When I read that and studied that, it, it blew my mind. And I had to tell my grandkids, Corey, Corey wants to know about God. I said, come on, you already been to Poppy. Teach me what you used to teach me. God is telling us for a time such as this, as we prepare to go into this Moedim, let us clean our hearts. I'm breaking up the soil. Some of y'all not going to get it. Because he said, not all. Some of y'all not going to get it. But he's telling us we want to grow. And he ain't talking about bringing a thousand people in here. He's talking about for us to grow in fellowship one with another. Let's get rid of these ideas and, and, and all these preconceptions. Let us be accountable for what we're supposed to be doing and ministries and everything else so that as we bring it, people will look and they will flock to it. Cut that off. Cut that off. I thought I had silent. But God is telling us as I close. As I close, God, I want you to order my feet. Because there's a lot of prayers on feet, which I'll give you on the 27th. To order my steps. Order my steps. That where I move, where I go, I want you to order them. I asked him every morning when I get up, I prayed to him and I said, Father, as I go on this highway, I want you to protect me because people cut me off. And if anybody been up 288 doing 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock in the morning, they driving like nuts. And I asked them, well, they just help me because I want to go back to my old ways and tell people off. But God said, no. when I tell them to order my step, when I go into the housing authority, when I go into these different areas to talk about you, bless me, keep me safe. For my harm, harm, and danger, I ask that you bless my family, this congregation, and all the other congregations on this Sabbath day. 
This is my prayer in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. If you agree, say amen and amen. Amen. Amen.